Hey, it's Abdullah. So Nokia Mobile just announced two new phones to its product lineup, which are the Nokia G11 and the Nokia G21. Now, naturally, these come as the successors to the G10 and G20 from last year. So here's everything that you need to know about these new devices on paper. Starting with the G21, which comes with a 6.5 inch HD plus display with 90 Hertz refresh rate. In terms of processing power, the G21 gets a big bump compared to the G20 and is now running on the Unisoc T6 06 processor. This processor should give a significant bump in terms of day-to-day -day performance compared to the G20, which will definitely be helped with the 90Hz refresh rate as well. As for RAM and storage, you can now get up to 6 gigs of RAM, 128 gigs of built-in storage. The battery capacity remains the same at 5050 milliamps, and Nokia Mobile is promising up to 3 days of usage on a single charge. It's a bit optimistic, but they also added a battery super saver mode, which should definitely help if you want to reach up to 3 days. Other than that, charging has been upgraded, so you get up to 18 watts of fast charging compared to 10 last year, but the charger included in the box will be only a 10 watts charger. Unlike last year's G20, which came with four cameras on the back, the G21 comes with only three cameras. The main sensor got an upgrade from 48 megapixels up to 50 megapixels. However, in terms of results, we still have yet to see how much of an improvement that actually will be. Alongside the main sensor, you get a two megapixel macro camera and a two megapixel depth sensor. There is no longer a five megapixel ultra wide camera like last year. The selfie camera remains an eight megapixel shooter. And the phone also retains Ozo spatial audio recording in video. And the Wi-Fi now supports Wi-Fi AC, which means you finally get to enjoy five gigahertz frequency. The phone will ship out of the box with Android 11, but it's promised two years of OS updates and three years of security updates. And the device is labeled as Android 12 ready, which hopefully means that Android 12 should be just around the corner for it. You still get a fingerprint scanner, which is integrated into the power button and it's located on the right side of the device, and a Google Assistant button on the left side. The phone also still has a 3.5 mm headphone jack and supports two SIM cards as well as an SD card slot. The design has also been refreshed as you can see in the images, but the phone is still made completely out of polycarbonate plastic with a textured back finish. The most notable improvement is that the device is now only 8.5 mm thick compared to 9.2 mm on last year's G20. So it is thinner, which should make it a bit easier to use and hold. In terms of colors, the G21 comes in two color options. So you get Nordic blue, which is a very deep blue, as well as Dusk, which this year is more of a brown bronzish color. The phone will be available for sale very soon in many markets at a starting price of around 170, 180 US dollars. As for its identical, less capable twin, the G11, this year it's a lot closer to the G21 than the G10 was to the G20 last year. So you get the exact same type of display, even with 90 Hertz refresh rate, the same chipset inside, which is the Unisoc T606 processor, and also the same big 5050 milliamps battery capacity. The only differences between them is that the rear camera on the G11 is a 13 megapixel shooter compared to 50 megapixels on the G21. There's no also spatial audio recording. The other key difference is in the storage where the G11 tops out at four gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of onboard storage. Of course, both of these devices come running on a stock version of Android. The G11 comes in two color options, ice, which is a very nice hue of green, and charcoal, which is like a dark gray. It should also be available for sale very soon in many markets at a starting price of around 140, 150 US dollars. So what do you guys think about these two new devices? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I think on paper, at least, they're both a nice upgrade over their predecessors and should definitely have much better day-to-day -day performance. The other aspects obviously require further testing, especially the main camera on the G21. How much of an upgrade is it really in terms of output compared to last year's 48 megapixel camera is something that we have yet to see. I'll hopefully be uploading my impressions and unboxing videos as soon as I get my hands on these two devices. So definitely stay tuned for that. That's it for me. This was Abdullah signing out and I hope you have a good one.